Okay, this next problem is looking at summarizing categorical variables. Specifically, we're going to put together a frequency distribution uh, and then uh, a pie chart. I'm going to produce a second video for the pie chart just to, to try to keep these as short as possible. So, why might we want to do this? Well, you know, in this exercise, uh, we're looking at a sample of information uh, student responses to a survey on their preferences towards their b statistics for business and economics course. I've only got a survey or a sample of 10 students and so here I've got those 10 responses. Imagine if I had 100 responses or, or even 50 responses. It could be very hard for, for somebody to be looking at that data and to be able to easily identify trends or patterns or specific responses in this case that are the most common, least common, um, it can be hard to extract any kind of meaningful information uh, from pages and pages of raw data. So how can we then take all of that data and sort of summarize it in an in easily digestible graphic uh, that almost anybody could be able to, to interpret? So here we'll work with a, a small sample set. We just have 10 observations and, and that just helps keep, uh, keep things simple for us. Uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is just count how many times each particular response occurs within that data set. So I'm looking at uh, this first column here uh, where we're going to uh, just count uh, frequency of responses. So if we start off uh, very unpleasant. So how many students in this data set found uh, the course to be very unpleasant? Hopefully hopefully not many. Here I have one. Uh, as I see them, I'm going to cross them off. Uh, it just makes keeping track of them uh, a little bit easier. So very unpleasant. Only one student found it to be so unpleasant. Uh, unpleasant. So moving on to the next one, uh, two. Uh, looks like only two students found it to be unpleasant, not bad. Here I have one, two, again, two students. Interesting, one, two, three, and four students found it interesting. And here there's that one student who found it to be very interesting. So now we've got our count, we've got our, our, our frequency values uh, for each of these responses. The next column, relative frequency, uh, relative frequency is simply, let me just uh, abbreviate RF. So this is the, the ratio of frequency, so the number, the number of times that that response exists in the data set divided by uh, total number of responses, sometimes denoted as N. So here we have uh, a survey of 10 students, so n equals 10. We have 10 responses. Okay, so the relative frequency uh, is for the first one, 1 divided by 10. So this is just 0.1. 2 divided by 10, there's 0.2. The same for the next. Uh, 4 divided by 10, and 1 divided by 10. Okay. So there's our relative frequencies. And then the percent frequency is relative frequency times 100, so that we can refer to it as a percentage. So this simply means here I have 10, so 10% 10 of the students found it to be very unpleasant. 20% found it to be unpleasant, same as not bad. 40% uh, found it to be interesting, and 10% found it to be very interesting. Okay, so we're, we're breaking it down, we're having different ways that we can explain this data. What we want to do now is produce that graphical representation, uh, and that is what uh, we're going to produce for part B of this problem. So I'm going to look at uh, a frequency uh, distribution. Let me just draw my, my x and y axes. On the x-axis, this is the this is the value that we're going to be plotting. This is what we're trying to communicate. So this is my frequency. On the x-axis, here I'm going to put the labels uh, that correspond to each of my 
each of my categories. I'm going to abbreviate this. Yeah, very unpleasant. Unpleasant, not bad. Interesting and very interesting. Just because I have limited space uh, on my on my graph. So if I transfer these over <coughs> to my x-axis, interesting and very interesting. So now I just have to transcribe these values from here uh, over over to my my graph. So for the number of students who found it to be very uninteresting, here we just have one. So I'll make this bar relatively short, fill it in. And I'm going to put the data labels on here too. Uh, again, it just makes it easier to, to extract relevant information from a quick glance at the, at the graph. Uh, unpleasant, here I have two students, so I'll make that oops, roughly twice as tall. So here I have two students. Not bad, <coughs> this was also two students, so same height, not bad. Those who found it to be interesting, that's the most, four students, so again I'm going to make that twice as tall as my two students. This was four, and finally the very interesting, uh, only one student, so that's about as tall as my, my first one. I'll put that label on there. So now it becomes much easier uh, to to communicate and for somebody else to look at this picture and see, oh, yeah, forty percent of the students or most of the students uh, seem to find it to be quite interesting. Uh, one percent found it to be very interesting, and so we can even combine these and say, okay, well, five students found it to be uh, at least uh, an interesting course. So this graphical summary now makes it just that much easier for somebody else to look at and to be able to understand what's happening uh, in that data. If I were to consider part C here, produce a bar graph to illustrate relative frequencies, we don't actually have to change much because the, the relative sizes of each of these, this is still going to be twice as big as this and this is still going to be twice as tall as this. So the, the number of responses doesn't change. The, the relative magnitude or size of each of these bars in the bar graph doesn't change. All that changes is instead of on the y-axis having only frequency, now this is relative frequency. And all of my, my values, actually I don't even have to erase them completely, because here, these are now just going to be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 0 0.1. So now I'm just taking these values here and moving them over. So it really doesn't change the nature of that graph. Had we graphed percent frequency, same thing. We just change the scale on that y-axis. Uh, and nothing else, nothing else is affected. So here I can see, once again, if I just look at these two bars, 0 0.4 plus 0 0.1, 0 0.5, or 50%, 50% of my students uh, found it to be at least interesting. So here we can, uh, oops, I went below. 50% of the students found it to be, a, as a minimum, uh, an interesting course. Okay, so I hope that helps with uh, the bar graphs and calculating some of these relative and percent frequencies. Uh, I'm going to end this video here and we'll pick up uh, with a bit of a clean slate uh, and then we'll go through uh, producing a pie chart uh, of the same data. Okay, thanks for watching.